things and how they're different? Well, um, obviously it's a personal injury case and that's one of our, uh, one of the areas that we practice here. Um, a dog bite case in South Carolina is different from like a car wreck or a slip and fall in that our, our animal bite statute in South Carolina is a strict liability statute. And essentially what that means is uh, a lot of the times with some, with some exceptions, we don't have to really uh, worry about proven liability. We're simply arguing over damages. Um, and so, and sometimes in these uh, dog bite cases, they can be severe. So, yeah. um, you know, obviously all our staff is trained to, to work up uh, uh, the dog bite investigation, the way it's proper, supposed to be properly done. And that involves uh, working with the animal control officer and DHEC, Department of Health and Environmental Control here in South Carolina to get their report and any kind of uh, investigation that they've completed. And, uh, you know, and then from there we coordinate the uh, medical treatment like, a, like an injury case and uh, work to get the case settled. Awesome. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics says that 5% of all emergency are dog bite related, which that just sounds kind of crazy to me, but, but it's true. So what are the, some of the scenarios that we see in this office with dog bite cases, especially kids? With kids, yeah. Now, kids, uh, obviously, uh, you know, we see children attacked by a neighbor's dog. Um, we see children who may walk up to a dog. The dog is not, is not familiar with the child. The dog may perceive the child as maybe another animal or, or not, you know, necessarily the dominant, uh, the dominant animal in the room. And so they could attack or bite or nip at them. Um, of course, and, and children are attracted to dogs. You know, they'll see a dog, go walk up to a, to a dog, uh, you know, walk in the neighborhood and try to pet it. And the next thing you know, uh, it's, it's not familiar and, and the, uh, the dog uh, bites the kid. So I agree with that number. I say that number is probably even more than that. Uh, uh, just due to, uh, you know, the amount of numbers that we see, especially down here at the beach. So yeah. It's crazy. When I was a little girl, and you've heard this story a hundred times, but when I was a little girl, my sister, my baby sister had gotten um, home from school, and she's four years younger than me, and I think I was, she was five, so I was about nine or ten at the time, and a dog came up from a, na a neighbor's dog, came up in the yard, and she said, hey there, puppy, and, and the dog attacked her, and she ended up going through uh, skin grafts on her hands and stitches and all that stuff. It's, it's hard. It's really hard, especially on our babies when we see that happen. It breaks our heart. Uh, now, we yeah, often... The big. I, go ahead, babe. I was going to say the big, the big issue with damage is, you know, obviously it could be you, you have crush damage from the bite. If these bites, uh, yeah. you know, pierce the skin, you've got the crush damage, and then you may have some scarring if there's some significant lacerations. Um, sometimes, in, uh, you know, they're going to get a tetanus shot, the child, obviously, but then uh, you really got to watch the kids because uh, we've had several cases where infection sets in and, uh if you don't keep an eye on it, then they're, they're a surgical candidate because they got to go in there, a doctor have to go in there and do a debridement procedure. And that's very painful for a child, obviously, very traumatic for a child. Um, but it, it happens a lot. And, you know, uh, people don't think it could happen. I mean, we have dog bites that are really bad from chihuahuas and, and, and small little little breeds. And then obviously we have the, you know, the, the, the big vicious breeds, the, the pit bulls and things like that you would think of when you would think of a dog bite, but it could really be any, any kind of dog can, can, can hurt a child bad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you said you were talking about vicious propensity, vicious dogs, what is vicious propensity? Did, did, what does that mean? And does that affect the case? Does it help? Does it not help? Well, here, here here's the deal. Um, some states have a one bite rule in South in uh, you know, in their jurisdiction or whatever. And that means, you know, you really can't bring a case unless you, you can affirmatively show there was a vicious propensity of, of that particular animal in South Carolina. It doesn't matter. We don't have a one bite rule. It can, it can be uh, uh, the first bite can give rise to a cause of action. As long as we have damages uh, that were caused by the, uh, the, the animal. So uh, the, the one issue we do see, and the biggest issue with these cases uh, it's not the bite itself, it's finding insurance uh, applicable to pay the loss. And that's from the person whoever's in the care, custody, and control of the animal. Uh, and so when we talk about vicious propensities, uh, uh, something we've been seeing lately uh, are these uh, exclusions in homeowners uh, coverage where for a vicious breed. And so uh, they'll say, hey, pit bulls, we're not paying on it. We'll pay for a dog bite, but we're not going to pay for a, a, a bite by a, by a pit bull. You can't have a pit bull, you can't have a Rottweiler or you know, whatever they determine in the policy to be a dangerous breed. 
Well, then we got to always uh, see. Well, is it a true pit bull? Is it a is it a is it a mud of some sort? Is it some other kind of hybrid dog? And you know, we get into those kind of scenarios and try to get the coverage for the for the injured person. But uh, definitely a, a vicious breed. Uh, uh, definitely plays a role in it. And obviously, you know, a, a bite by a pit bull in the eyes of a jury is different from a bite by, uh, you know, a little fluffy uh, Maltese, like busy our dog. Right. So, uh, yeah. you know, definitely that, that plays a role in it as well. Yeah. I know that we have a lot of people that when they come in, they don't want to, you know, oftentimes they or their children or someone in their family has been bitten by not their dog. It's, it's never their dog. It's always their neighbor's dog. And one of the issues that comes up is nobody wants to sue your neighbor. You know, how do you get, how do we help facilitate and get people without ruining that relationship with their neighbors? Right. And that's, a, that's, that's something that we'll have at the initial, uh, you know, the initial consult, you know, we'll definitely have that discussion. And of course it, it, it depends on the circumstances, right? That's, that's the famous lawyer. It depends the lawyer right. answer, but it, it does depend. So, I mean, here's the deal. If, if, if one of my neighbors, this is just me talking, but if one of my neighbor's dogs bites my kid, I'm going to sue them. Of course, I'm a lawyer saying that, but anybody who says that, we've got to protect your child and we've got to protect right. you first. Now, if, if it's very minor damages and there's no, you know, there, there's no skin pierced, no, nobody's really hurt, and, um, you know, you just don't want to pursue it and, and you're going to value the, the, the friendship over or the, you know, the neighborly love over the damages, then, I mean, that's, that's the second conversation that we'll have. But, I mean, and I tell this to my clients, we got to take care of, of, of you. We got to take care of your family first, and then we'll worry about your neighbors because they're the ones, you know, their negligence yeah. led to the bite. Right. I also tell people all the time because we have this vision, if we've never had to sue anybody, and the majority of us in the world haven't, um, is that we're going to take somebody's home. And that's not the case. What we're doing is we're going after that homeowner's policy, which is why we have insurance to begin with. It's like we have a ton of insurance on our car just in case we were to hurt somebody or on our home in case something were to happen. And so, you know, a lot of times we tell people, you know, we're not going after their home, their 401k, their bank accounts. We're just asking for the insurance company to do what they, what, what they bought that insurance for. You know, it's not about going after the, the neighbor's personal assets. It's just about going after the insurance policy so that your family member who's been hurt in, um, in a dog bite case can be taken care of. Yeah. And so, and early on in, in a case, this is what people don't understand as well. We're, we're not necessarily going to court on day one. So, yeah, we, we set up a claim against the homeowner's policy, and hopefully they have a homeowner's policy applicable that will cover, you know, a, a dog bite attacks. And from there, obviously, we wait till they're done treating and then submit a demand against the, the, uh, the homeowner's policy pre-suit. So nobody's in court, there's no depositions or anything yet. And uh, a lot of times, because we do have a great law, the strict liability law in South Carolina, we can get the, the, the injured person compensated without ever having to go to court. Now, there are times when they want to fight us on something or they want to lowball the injured person, and then our hands are tied. We're going to file suit and proceed through the litigation process. But again, you're not trying to take their home. We are trying to get the case worked out for the limits in most in most circumstances. Right. There's Every always case a different. With but we're right. trying to get the at least get the limits of, of coverage on the available applicable homeowners policy. Yeah. So kids and children are by and large um, the victims that we see in this office. We do have adult victims, of course, but children is like a, a the the most common dog bite victims that we see. And what happens when your child's in another, you know, your neighbor's yard and the neighbor's dog bites them? Are they still liable? Well, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's uh, any dog in South Carolina, it depends on who that dog, whose care, custody, and control uh, mm -hmm. that dog falls under. So, uh, you know, we have, we've had this case where, you know, you have a relative staying at uh, another relative's yeah. home down here at the beach, uh, but they bring along their pit bull. And then they walk their pit bull, and they've been staying there for a month. Well, guess what? That homeowner has been feeding the dog, allowing the dog to stay there. Now coverage applies because that dog uh, is essentially under the care, custody, and control of that neighbor. So it, definitely, if it happens in their yard, uh, that would happen. But it doesn't have to be in their yard. I mean, it could be you could they could be walking the dog down the street. And they live two two uh, two doors down. We simply have to investigate uh, with with DHEC and the animal control officer and figure out. Uh, what, where's the applicable homeowner? Where does he live? And, and is there a policy? Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of investigation that we have to do, but we, we hunt all interested parties down and, and pursue whatever we have to. 
So if someone out there has been bitten by a dog or someone in their family has, what can they do um, to get a hold of us, Justin? Well, it's easy. Just give us a call. You can reach out here, um, comment on any of our videos, or just call us at 843-839-4111. Shoot me an email. We handle these all throughout the state and all the time. They kind of pick up during the summer when everybody's outside. But, uh, right. you know, we got a steady stream of these, and we get pretty good results for our clients. You know, every case is different. We'd be glad to, to help you or at least take a look at it and put you in the right, uh, you know, give you some advice, put you in the right spot. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. If you've been hurt by a dog, give us a call, 843-839-4111.